you'd like to join, and so she can give you the link and the study guide. Handbell practices Thursdays at 7 p.m. Children's choir Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Choir practice on Sundays before the service at 9. Watch for dates and times for the children's handbell practice. There are other, many other fun and fruitful groups and events that meet less frequently. The confirmation class met today in Sunday school would also meet tomorrow at 7 p.m. on the church Zoom for those who do not meet in person. They are working on finishing up the Apostles' Creed. The hybrid church meeting is next, church council meeting is next Monday, not this Monday, but next Monday, May 9th at 7 p.m. in person and also on Zoom. Remember, anyone who's interested in what's happening may come or join by Zoom to listen and get more involved. You may even put an item on the agenda by contacting someone in the council. It's the goal of the council to get the meeting notes out to the congregation as quickly as possible so that everyone will be form informed about the business of the church. If you have any questions or would like to get me more involved, please call Robin Emery, president of the church council. The youth group will continue meeting on the second Friday of each month from 6.30 to 8, January, uh, May 13th and June 10th. Please watch for information about a healing service that may be offered at church on Sunday at 10.30 during the Easter service, Easter season, excuse me. Next, ladies' lunch is Friday, May, 2nd, May 20th at Ch Schultz's Crab House. Um, please come for fellowship, laughter, and good food. Some updates. Friends for Supper, which I was there, and, and that went really well. We fed 100 people again with hot meals and let them shop free in the free market pace for meats, breads, canned goods, fresh from the farm, vegetables. Thank you to Karen and Whitney and the many helpful helpers at another successful food outreach. Please consider getting involved. There's so much fun and fellowship as people prepare the meal, help the shoppers, and welcome anyone who eats in. Opportunities for sponsorship. We are in need of people to sponsor altar flowers in memory or in honor of a loved one or a special birthday or anniversary. You can sponsor also the altar light or a week of grass cutting. Please sign up for these sponsorships in the church, in the charts in the back of the church. And the garden is my area. Perennials are coming up and dahlias are planted. Onions, lettuce, and potatoes have been planted a couple of weeks, maybe three or four weeks ago, and they're coming up. Soon to be planted tomatoes, cucumbers, and peppers, and we'll be working on adding flowers to the shade garden in the front of the office. And I'd like to thank my mother for helping me weed the garden, which is always a lot of work. And so we'll be planning in the shade garden as well. I think that's everything. All right. Yeah. Oh, God. Thank you. 
Our church knows how to celebrate every Sunday a new celebration. And today is May Day, not like May Day, May Day, but like Flower Day. And so Cora was our flower girl to celebrate May Day. And we have a very special guest, my dear, dear friend, Roger. We've been together for a long time. And Roger has a true heart for the Lord, true heart. Roger at Epiphany is their deacon who does visitations and funerals and the Saturday night service. And I know a little something special about Roger. He even did a funeral for a dog in the sanctuary, complete with communion. And the dog was buried in the church graveyard. It, yeah, it was a dog that meant the world to this woman. And she then started a pet support group for people who lost their pets. So yeah, Roger that too. But I want to think of him mostly as an encourager. Whenever you might feel a little down or maybe that sermon wasn't the greatest, he'll come right to you and say, that was so beautiful. And I know he means it from inside his heart. He's a true encourager. And that's what God gave him as a gift. So thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. And as a deacon, Rogers, one of his main jobs is to read the gospel. And he takes great um, care with that gospel. It is so sacred to him. So today, May Day, believe it or not, is astronomically exactly halfway between the beginning of spring and the beginning of summer. So it's coming. Summer is coming. So that's one day that's important to to um, celebrate because it's a day of unity. Unity. In all the cultures that celebrate May Day with the maypole and flowers, it always means unity. We come together and we celebrate. And what do we celebrate? Nature. And who gave us nature? God. So in its way, it's a, a religious holiday. Without our world, we wouldn't have anything to tend. We've been put in this world just like Adam and Eve were put in their world to tend garden. And paradise means garden yeah, in Greek. And then biblically, biblically, we have one of the, the most important sightings when the disciples find Jesus after he's resurrected from the dead. And this one speaks to my heart and hope it speaks to your heart the way he spoke with them and fed them after he had risen. So let us begin by saying, blessed be the holy trinity of light, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. We open our joyous service today in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as we confess our sins within our hearts. We'll keep a silence for talking to God right now. Holy One, we confess that we are captive to sin 
and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who with the Holy Spirit was with you at the beginning of creation, forgive us and help us to live renewed in faith, trust, and carefulness. Amen. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ. We are new creations. And for this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, O oh God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened the sea wide with Israelites. And now in these waters, you flood us with mercy and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. And now breathe upon the waters and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and end, Alpha and Omega, Shepherd and Lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving now and forever. Amen. Sing to God above a hymn of joyful greeting, a song of grateful love in the new day's light repeating. You made the sea and sky, the sun and stars in splendor. Delight shone in your eye, all your works were filled with wonder. Alleluia, alleluia. Oh, sing to God above, alleluia. Oh, sing to God above, a hymn of praise and blessing, a song of grateful love, hope and faith our hearts expressing. Creation lifts its voice to tell of might and glory, and we too will rejoice to proclaim the saving story. Alleluia, Alleluia, oh sing to God above, Alleluia, oh sing to God above, Alleluia. Thanks to Mel building all these platforms for me. Roger will be seven foot one if he stands up alongside me. <laughs> but now the grace and light of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Eternal and all merciful God, with all the angels and all the saints, 
we laud your majesty and might. By the resurrection of your Son, show yourself to us and inspire us to follow Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. first reading today comes from Acts chapter 9 verses 1 through 6 and 7 through 20. Saul, later called Paul, was an ardent prosecutor, persecutor of all who followed the way of Christ. This reading recounts the story of his transformation beginning with a counter with Jesus on the way to Damascus. The reading. Saul, Still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, man, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what, what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice, but Saul knew one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him from the, by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, get up and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judas, look for a man of Taurus named Saul. At this moment he was praying. 
and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has, and here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days he was with the disciples in Damascus. And immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue saying, he is the son of God. Please read responsibly the Psalm as written in the bulletin. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted up and have let and have not let my enemies triumph triumph over me. O Lord. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. God's wrath is short. God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping spends the night, but joy comes in the morning. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. What profit is there in my blood? If I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put my sackcloth, you have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. The second reading comes from Revelation chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. The vision of John recorded in Revelation offers a glimpse of cosmic worship around the throne. At its center is the Lamb who was slain. The reading. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice. Worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing. To the one seated on the throne and to the lamb be blessings and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worship. This is the end of the reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. After he appeared to his followers in Jerusalem, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, 
I am going fishing. They said to him, we are all going with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Now Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast with me. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Now Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wish. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not want to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I'm used to a microphone. This is the third time, the third time that Jesus appears to them. Um, the second time, remember the first time was when Thomas wasn't there. Um, they were all like, it's the Lord. So the first time was to assure them he was there. Second time was because Thomas hadn't been there the first time, had to come back. He loved Thomas so much. He came back to show Thomas. Then what in the world are they doing now? Remember the second time we said God in Jesus came back to tell them, you got to leave this upper room. You're scared to death. You don't have to be afraid. I'll take care of you. So they left the upper room all right, but they fished. All right, so there's a couple things about this. 
Fishing was what they always did. So they're in this quandary. So Jesus has risen, but where is he? We used to spend every single day with him. He told us where to go, what to do, who needed healing, who needed comfort. Um, we were sent out by him and received back by him. And now he just comes once in a while. They had no clue. They, they listened and they knew what Jesus wanted, but they were in this sort of lull of, oh, God, what do I do now? They're just waiting and wondering. You know, that's a, a hard place to be. And so many of us are there. We always, or at least I always was like, oh, those disciples. But think about it. If you're in a lull between jobs, between homes, between lots of stuff that we're always between, between pandemic and then new pandemic. I mean, we're in lulls between these things. And we're like, God, what do we do now? Jesus, come tell us, what do we do? And sure enough, when the disciples were, well, let's just go back to old ways. I mean, what else is there? Let's do what we always did. We always fished. I noticed they go out at night, probably because the catch might be a little better, but also probably because people wouldn't see them. Um, so still have that little tad of fear. And they fish. And it's just what they always did. And they catch no fish, so things are worse. So it's bad enough when you're, you're poised to do a new thing. And then it doesn't come about as you expect it. And so you go back to the old thing, and even that's crushed and burned. No fish. These disciples are very much where we are a lot of times in our life. And they're missing one humongous thing, trust. And I'll be the first to confess, there are so many times that I don't trust, even though I have a book of 100 promises from the Bible, from Jesus, from God, and then there's a sequel, because there's 100 more in the sequel, and, and it just keeps going. And I read that every day, and I hear the promises. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to, to make you great, plans to help you succeed, nothing to harm you or set you back. That's a promise. Do I trust it all the time? No. Sometimes I'm like, I better just get going. I'm just going to do this. I, I, I got to get going. And usually when you're in a position, when you take the ball, the horn, the bull by the horns and you go, it doesn't work out. And luckily, God loves you enough to slam some doors, right? You're like, oh, well, that's not going to happen. And same with the disciples. They're tired of waiting. We are an immediate gratification society, and so were they. <clears throat> we can't take um, all the blame. I mean, we have microwaves. We have quick internet. But they weren't willing to wait either. They're like, okay, let's just fish. And they're like, yeah, let's fish. Really? <laughs> So they're out there fishing, they're dismayed, there's nothing, and Jesus shows up. <clears throat> That's exactly what Jesus will do for you. When you're in that, that moment between and you're like, what do I do now, what do I do next? You're grieving, you're confused, you're, you're not sure where to go or what to do in your job or your, your ministry or anything, Jesus shows up. And sure enough, he not only shows up, but he shows up with delicious breakfast to nourish them and to let them know he loves them. Jesus uses food all the time. Even in our communion, Jesus uses food. Yes, bread and wine. He used food when he ate at people's houses. And he used food for comfort, for fellowship, right? That What better fellowship than to, to eat together, to drink the wine together? to be in unity. And I love Peter. Peter has done a lot wrong, but he says, it is the Lord. And he puts his clothes on for, to honor Jesus, right? To make sure he's, you know, in grace, facing his Lord and jumps into the water. He doesn't care if he gets wet. He wants to be with Jesus. And he swims ashore. And then, you know, of course, their fish is tons, right? Tons of fish. Um, in fact, I never remembered numbers, so I left this open for the number. They caught, when Jesus said, cast your net on the other side, they caught 100, was it 176? 
it was something. Yes, they caught so many, right? Now, you might say, oh, it's just a number, right? Just a number. But guess what? There's so many people that, like um, Augustine, he said, well, this is how you go. It's one part of the world from beginning till when um, David was king. Then the second part's from David to Jesus. Then the third part's from Jesus to the church. The fourth part's the last in Revelation. Multiply four by the perfect number six. That's 24. Add one, and he goes on and on. He has a formula, and he comes right to the number. The number 176. Or, yeah, he comes right to it. He says, that's what God meant. Then other theologians are like, well, it's simple. It just, it means that every kind of fish was in the catch. I like that one better. For 176 fish, you're not going to get all flounder or all bass, right? You're going to get a variety. And that's who Jesus invites to our church. Different kinds of people. All cultures, faiths, people with identities that are different than ours. People from just... All people, skin color, whatever, different from ours, that's who is in the church, our church. And so to me, that big number of fish means, number one, Jesus is going to give you abundance if you trust him. And number two, the abundance is going to be a multitude and a various number and, and like different people who will comfort you and be with you and strengthen you and give you different outlooks. Now, they did not seem to trust Jesus. And yet when they saw a stranger on the, the bank who says, throw it to the other side, they trusted and did it. I mean, they're fishermen. They see this guy. It says they don't know who he is, but they trust him. They're like, yeah, throw it off to the other side. And the minute all those fish come in, they're like, it's the Lord. Then they recognize. And when they're with him, there can be nothing better, right? Even though they didn't trust him, once he's there and they see what he's going to do, they are with him 100%. And they eat a breakfast just full of protein and goodness and comfort and peace and love. So then Jesus looks at Peter, the least likely one I think that I'd want to run my church. I probably would choose John, the disciple whom Jesus loved. He was at the bottom of the cross. He was right there the whole time. He took Jesus' mother in without question and made her his mother. He chooses Peter as the main disciple, the, the um, person to run his church, to establish it on earth. Number one, Peter denied him three times. Peter can't feel good about that. Peter is the one that he had to say, get behind me, Satan, too. Peter is the one that during the transfiguration when everything was, and he should have just been in awe, said, let's build some tents. I, I'll build a tent here. You, Peter, why? God saw something in Peter that we didn't see, right? Jesus knew Peter's heart and the love that he had for him. He also knew, Jesus also knew, that Peter felt very guilty about denying Jesus three times. So three times, Jesus gives him a chance to make it up. Do you love me? Yes. Do you love me? Yes. Do you love me? Yes. Three positives to make Peter know it's okay. You did what you did is in the past, and now you professed your love for me three equal times to the times you denied me. So this lesson, just like last week's, was about, is about trust. Because remember we said the Greek word pist means trust more than believe. So now we have an issue of trust again. It speaks to us. Who do we trust? Think about today. Do you trust the government? Um, do you trust the tax people? Because they didn't trust their tax collectors. Do you trust that the federal um, government's going to get just enough taxes to, to do services? Do you trust the president, the vice president, the cabinet, the secretary of state, the attorney general? Do we trust our local Johnny O, our county exec, and, and Rick Metzger, our rep down the street? Do we trust transportation, that when we get on a bus or a plane, we'll be safe? Do we trust our pilot on the plane? 
Think about all the people you trust. Do you trust the driver who's speeding toward you to stop at the crosswalk or the red light? Do we trust our best friends who might once in a while have betrayed us or not been there when we needed them or not listened when we needed them? Sometimes, you know, you bear your soul to them and all they want to do is give you advice and tell you you did this wrong and you're deserving what you get, et cetera. And you're like, do I trust you anymore to keep my secrets? Do I trust you? Do you trust the church? Do you trust the clergy? Do you trust priests anymore? I'm telling you, there's so much in life that demands trust. And the most important trust is God. When you don't trust God, you live in fear and worry and you make dumb mistakes because you're like, well, you know, I'm, I don't think I should wait anymore to see where God wants me. Obviously, he wants me to make the decision and you make the wrong one. Or have you ever prayed so hard for one job to open up for you? I want this job, please. And then it opens up and it's wrong. And you realize you, you should have just prayed, God, put me where you want me. Because God will always put you where you flourish because God loves you that much. So trust is a big message in here. And do we trust that Jesus, when we say, I love you, Jesus, do we trust that he won't say, then all I need you to do is bring in 50 new people to your church every week? He doesn't say that. What's he say? He says, feed my lambs. And feed is much more than giving them food, although that's a big part of it. Feeding them means giving them comfort, being with them when you need, when they need you, um, taking them places when they can't drive, fixing their home when they can't fix it themselves, raking their leaves, whatever you can do to feed God's lambs, Jesus' lambs, means people everywhere who need food or, or um, you know, deodorants, any little thing. And our church does that so well. And individually, we do that too. Um, we drive down the street maybe with a, a little blessing bag with some food and a dollar or so for somebody who looks so miserable. And God puts that person on your heart. God really does. There's a guy in the middle of Merritt who every day dresses like the Statue of Liberty because Liberty Taxes is right there. Oh my God, he is, he is somewhat overweight and so he's miserably hot. So he takes his hat thing off and his robe is like half down on one side and he's just a mess. And then you look at him and he's like, you know, trying to hold the sign and then he falls in a hole the other day, he fell right in a hole in the middle. And I'm like, he needs a blessing bag. He's probably being paid, what, a dollar an hour or something to be out there. And he's so hot or he's so cold. He needs somebody to stop the car and say, hey, you, here's some water. Here's some, you know, a little bit of money. Get yourself a good lunch today. Blessings come to people in, that you just fall into meeting. You fall into meeting people and you're like, wow, this person needs me. I need this person. That's trust in God. Do we trust that everybody we help deserves it in, in certain ways, not deserves it because they're, you know, a certain class, but deserves it because they really are hungry? Do we trust that they're hungry for real and that's why they get our groceries or they really need toys and that's why they get our toys? Well, I found out one person who had um, a card for food was actually trying to sell it for money. And I said, what do you need all this money for? And he said, you don't understand. He said, I, my kids don't have acne medicine. They're miserable. So you can't always judge, can you? you he said, I, I'd rather forego the food. Last week when I was speaking with Harvey, he said, you know what? Uh, Liberia, we can't even sell clothes anymore. People are so desperate because of this sham that the country's in and the awful corrupt government that they don't even wear good clothes they feed their kids instead. They have to make the decision. He said, but if what clothes they will buy are clothes for their children. So that's all we're selling, kids' clothes. So see, there's so much need that we keep up with by hearing people's stories, just listening. I think that's what Jesus says the second time when he says, tend my flock. He means just listen, just be, just be there. 
You don't have to, to have multitudinous resources or a mind that's like a um, memory bank to tell them you can go here for this and there for that. Just listen. That's the best ministry ever sometimes. It really, really is. So Jesus says, tend my flock. Be there and listen. So I want to talk about being there. And of course, I have to bring up my hero, President Zelensky. So he, as I told you last week, was, I mean, everybody's like, get out of there, get out of there. But he wouldn't. He had to be there. And there have been eight assassination attempts on his life, including Russian parachutists who parachuted down, and there were a hundred of them, all then storm the capital and kill him and his family. But he was saved. And when he's asked, you know, do you think you should leave? Or he said, I have to be here. And by him being there, the Ukrainians are still fighting like crazy because their leader is there. Now, talk about trusting in God. He absolutely says, if I have to die, I will die because that's what will happen in God's will. Then somebody may step up better, but I must be here. Then they ask him, have you lost your sense of humor? He said, well, I just saw something I will never forget, a decapitation, and the grandmom who was decapitated had on the exact same clothes that my grandmom always wore. He said, that was hard to take. So I have to, I have to read this because I don't trust myself knowing it fully. But they said to him, well, something like that will make you lose your sense of humor, right? They said, you, you've lost your sense of humor. He said, of course not. That's impossible. It's impossible to let that happen. For humor is a means of survival. Otherwise, everybody around would feel depressed. And feeling depressed is not a good way to win. You have to be in a victorious mood. No matter how hard it is, that's the goal. The goal is definitely not to lose. So you can't be in a mood of weakness or panic. You have to keep it together. And that togetherness has to be in everything. Your mood, your methods, your words, your actions. And through God, it's possible. I loved those words. And it also made me feel better about making stupid jokes when I preach. But um, it really did. I'm serious. I thought maybe I should stop, but now I won't. Um, but he is a truster. And we people trust in him because of that. His approval rating was something like single digits. And now it's 97%. It's actually gone up because he's there and because he's positive and because he holds it together. Also, this is just funny to me. He has been um, dubbed the sexiest man in the world. <laughs> I love that. All these women are like tweeting and stuff. And when they say why they think he's sexy, they said, because he's not like the, the little boys that try to date me, who would run away from danger, who wouldn't stay and fight. So see, that's what makes him attractive in every way. He trusts, he stays, he fights. We need to do that too. If he can fight an entire war with communications and love and being there, we can fight this war we're in. Trust me, we're in a war. We are in a war. And it's not with violent gang people. It's with Satan. And God and Satan are in this battle together. For the longest time after I had COVID, I thought I, I got real um, vertigo. And I thought, wow, this vertigo, this is, oh, I can't even get out of, I can't do that, I can't do that. And it hit me that I was not battling a health issue, I was battling Satan. Because every time I had vertigo, I couldn't do this, I couldn't do that. I, and my ministry demanded that I pick up my grandkids and that I do this and that I do that and that I make sure I have my sermon ready. You know, I realized it. I'm like, Satan, you're not going to do this. And I, I was told by my um, mentor, just talk to Satan directly. Satan, I know this vertigo is coming from you because there's nothing health-wise wrong with me. I've had everything checked. I am just fine. So you need to get out and let me go forward with my God. Jesus is there. He will fix you breakfast. But what I like most of all 
is he will say, do you love me? And you can answer, yes. And he'll tell you what to do. And then he'll say, do you really love me? And you can answer, yes. And then he'll, he'll tell you another thing you could do. And then the third time, do you love me? I love you, Lord. You know what he'll say then? He'll say, well, I love you too. And together, you and I are going to go places and do big things. Just trust me. Do you trust me? Yes, Lord, I trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Sherman is what wondrous love is this, 666. <laughs> Wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that draws the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for oh my soul, for oh my soul, to bear the dreadful curse for oh my soul? When I was sinking down, sinking down, sinking down, when I was sinking down, sinking down, when I was sinking down beneath God's righteous crown, Christ laid aside his crown for my soul, for my soul, Christ laid aside his crown for my soul. To God and to the Lamb I will sing, I will sing. To God and to the Lamb I will sing. To God and to the Lamb who is the great I am. While millions join the theme I will sing. I will sing while millions join the theme. I will sing. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing God's love for me. And through eternity, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And through eternity, I'll sing on. I have lots of helpers for the kids' service sermon, um, including Miss Phyllis, who put together lots of cool stuff, and all these beautiful decorations from Miss Linda. Um, yep. So do you want to come on up, kids? I see kids who can't hide. And while I'm setting this up, Mr. Rogers is going to talk to you about May Day and what it really was. Well, I'm just going to say what I think I know which isn't a whole lot. <laughs> but May Day, uh, as far as I can remember, was originated uh, in the 13th century. And I do believe it was started in Germany and Austria. And the towns over there, you know, they used to decorate a pole. It was a, I think it was another reason to have a festival and to have a good time. And they decorate the pole and they dance around the pole. Well, there was a point in time back then that uh, I remember that um, some people came along and said it was wicked to dance around the pole and it was superstitious, and they stopped it. 
they canceled it. Uh, none of the towns could do it anymore. But thank goodness, it's back to the old thing again. They're back dancing around the pole, decorating the pole, and having a good time. That's what I know about May Day. Um, and they've got, Ellen's got a lot of decorative stuff there. Yeah. And we'll watch Ellen and see what she does next. <laughs> it's sure to be a funny thing, no matter what. <laughs> Even though she doesn't intend that. Thank you, Roger. Um, this is what we're making. It's a May Day basket that they used to give out when they did. Like they had those festivals that Roger's talking about. They used to make beautiful flowers and things. So this is what we're making. Okay, so what we have are the ribbons that we staple to the bottom, right? And then we also have stickers for the sides, and we have ribbons to go up the top and make the handle. All right, so let's get it going. And all of it can be done. You put the stickers on first. All of it can be done without glue or anything yucky. Miss Phyllis always makes sure. Those are religious stickers. Um, flowers. Your flowers go in the very top. So get it going. And I'm, I told you it would be funny. I, uh, I really feel that the guys could even do this for their mamas, right? Because it's kind of not mannish, but um, mamas would love this. All right, so first thing, you can, if you want, staple your ribbons in. Whoa, what was that? <laughs> Here's ribbons, and they're all cut and ready for you. Miss Phyllis spends a lot of hours doing this. All ready. And I know I've heard from our friends at the Episcopalian Church that the youth reasons they would want to be coming because we need kids. So thank God for all our youth. Um, while we're, we're working on this and talking about um, May Day and all, I wanted to ask you guys, how important do you think nature is? Very important. God made our earth to sustain us. So it's a garden in which we are put to take care of everything. And in so doing, we maintain our own lives, correct? I mean, we need the trees to make sure that we have no, um, no to not carbon monoxide everywhere. The trees suck in that and spit out nice, good oxygen. We need water. How many countries? They're um, thinking another huge drought in Africa. So we got to get on the move, making sure they get good stuff. Okay, you good. Oh, that one's good. I got another reason why oh, grandma didn't put glitter glue in the bag is because it's dangerous in your hands. I know. And guess what? I have some extra right back there, oh, just in case anybody wants it. Glitter for their flowers right back there. <laughs> And then, yes, they're glitter stickers. So here are your two um, handles to staple on. Put through the holes, whatever you want to do. See, look, they're knotted so that they'll fit right through your holes. So um, just wanted to say another thing that the ELCA that we are under really and truly values the fact that churches have gardens and, and help feed people through fresh foods, like we have farmers that come. Um, so there are many grants that they're offering for that. So we're going to go after those grants for sure to make sure that we are having, you know, good gardens and good seeds. And the other thing we want to use our garden for, I don't know if Phyllis or um, Linda told you or anybody told you, but we'd like to have the youth help and learn gardening and um, 
and it'll be at like a place where you can sit and relax and meditate. Gardens have a lot of goodness with them. And as I said, garden is the word for paradise in Greece, in Greek. So that's important. All right. As soon as you're ready, there's flower time. Our favorite Some colors, roses, etc. And also, while we're sitting here, don't forget the little thing in your bulletin is about what dedication you'd like to give to your mom. So make sure you fill that out and put it in the basket in the back. Um, and what we'll do is on that day, we'll do something good with them. We'll put them on a board. We'll certainly read them aloud because um, Mother's Day is just around the corner. So the more dedications we have, the best, the better. You know what I love about our youth group? Not one of them is like, ooh, I don't want to do this. Or look, they, and all the guys are using the flowers just the way the girls are. It's beautiful. And you get a whole bunch of flowers. Look, any one to one. I would do like three or so, or at least, right? Um, I also wanted to say one other thing, that when people come into our church and people are starting to come into our church, new people, it's sometimes the work of the greeter, the pastor, whomever, to get them in, but it's always the work of the congregation to keep them. So we have a big responsibility that God wants us to feed people and, and make them happy, but most of all, to give them the gospel in their heart for comfort, peace, and love. And that's what we have to do as a church. A new thing, because society is very different, right? So we have to do a new thing. So while you're finishing up, we're going to pray, okay? So you guys keep going, but just listen to our prayer. God in heaven, we thank you for these children. Every week, it seems we have different ones or ones that come back to us. Or Lord, we praise you for them. And we ask that you give us a ministry that is above and beyond what people would expect in a church to keep our children with us, including summer camps and, and help with homework and a place to come and grow and people that they can trust, fellowship with their own ages plus their mentors, their adults, who they trust complicitly. Lord, help our children ministry to grow and flourish, be with its leaders, be with Sharon Greeson as she endeavors fully to interest the kids, be with John, who is helping, John Lotsky, who's helping with camping. Lord, be with our Sunday school teachers, Karen, Chris, and Sandy. As we do confirmation and Sunday school, we, we ask that you please give us the right places, the right people, and the right way to reach children through vacation Bible school, through anything, our, our picnics, anything we do, Lord, we ask that you bring them in and let us help them find you 100%. Amen. Amen. Nice. Are you proud of that? I would be. Woo. I would be. Gosh, these are gorgeous. These are gorgeous. They're even prettier than the one I made as a sample. <laughs> Phyllis says, why do you take credit for everything I do? I said, I, I don't mean to. <laughs> no, the, all the um, Lenten stuff. <laughs> I took credit. They'd say, we love your Lenten, your Lenten meal. And I'm like, thank you. But it really was Phyllis who did all of those. So I do take credit when I shouldn't. <laughs> Here you go, babes. Thank you. Um, you know that Administrative Assistance Day was this past week. 
I'm telling you, we have more than an administrative assistant. We have like an assistant pastor. We have assistant everything over here in Phyllis. Honestly, she's awesome. Um, always thinks of new ideas for the kids and for the decorations in the church. So can you join me in praising God and applauding for our loving administrative assistant? She's the best. Um, thank God every day for her. All right, we will move on, and the children know what they have to do before they leave. Go for it. Go for it. Louder. Share that peace. Peace with everybody on YouTube. Peace, Roger. Peace, Des. Happy job. But in a, on another note, Phyllis is right. She didn't say you take credit. I say that. I think she should say that. <laughs> But she doesn't. Living God, on this May Day, we bring our gifts and our tithes to you, knowing that you will use them through us to feed your lambs and tend your sheep. Help us to internalize your gospel from today, to eat the words through our eating of the bread of communion, so that they become part of our very flesh and blood. Give us the supernatural strength that enables us to serve you, no matter how the devil may try to stop us. Amen. Look upon us with favor, God, and give us faith that enables us to pour ourselves out for you, for others in our community, and for each other in the walls of this church. Amen. Together in one voice, as one blessed people of God, we pledge our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and made he descended into hell. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to the earth to live in the I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and our life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers today, we want to remember everybody on St. John's prayer list. But also, I'd like us to remember everybody in the Ukraine that they're going through. Let us pray. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation.
Holy One of new beginnings, fill us with new life. Send us into the world as you sent your apostles Philip and James to invite people to come and see your wondrous acts in Christ. God in your mercy. Revive ecosystems along coastlands that have been devastated by natural forces and human negligence. Reestablish plant and animal life that purifies air and water and that feeds humans and other living creatures. God in your mercy. Accompany laborers who get little rest from their work. Give them hope when they struggle to produce what they need. Give all who labor fair treatment and just wages. God, in your mercy. Be present to all faithful ones who are persecuted for following you. Sustain them by your faithfulness and give them strength in the name of Jesus. God, in your mercy. Restore all people who cry to you for help, especially Francisca, Steve, Jim, Brian, Colby, Cora, Jamie, Jan, Katie, Matt, Roy, Molly, Walter, Roy, Scarlett, Skip, Betty, Kathleen, Natalie, Mary, Susan, Pete, Shannon, Charlie, Bonnie, Barbara, Lisa, Cindy, Jerry, Carol, Kathy, Sylvia, Ian, Shirley, Becky, Suzanne, Larry, Scott, Phyllis, Michelle, Glenna, Lydia, Burton, and newborn baby Beckett, Roxanne, and Bill. And I just want to add Sue Fitzsimmons and Justin Fitzsimmons and Gail Wilson. And we pray for our people in the military, Andrew, Austin, James, Joseph, Marshall, Sean, Troy, Vincent, Alex, Brett, Michael, and Isaac. Does anybody have anybody else to be prayed for today? Let us turn their mourning into dancing, clothe them with joy, and put a testimony of healing and praise on their lips. God, in your mercy. Join our voices with angels, creatures, and all the saints in praising God and bestowing upon him all blessings and honor and glory. Reveal Christ's glory to us, through us, in our worship. God, in your mercy. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. 
joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ you have called your people to cleanse our hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal feast that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace Oh, how we marvel on this May Day at how you created seasons that come in their appointed cycle. And we now sit with Jesus at that fire and we hear his sweet voice and we answer, yes, Lord, we love you. And now we sing with the choirs of angels, the church on earth and the host of heaven, praising your name and joining their unending hymn, singing... Okay. Okay. Let's try a cappella. What we have to lose? Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Oh, Holy Spirit, gosh, we long for your presence here. Come among us and bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us, and may you awaken your people Fill us with your light, just as this church is ablaze in the light of the Lord. Awaken us to light, to full light and love. Bring the gift of peace to this earth. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. Even though we ask for the Holy Spirit to come, the Holy Spirit is here. And we're asking that we tap in to that amazing power that raised Jesus from the grave. So all who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. And with the Holy Spirit inside you, you will have the full righteousness that will assure you, you will never, you will never hunger, you will never thirst again, because God is always with you. And so now, remember, no matter what your age, your culture, your race, no matter what, you have been invited to this feast by God himself.
So please be grateful to our Lord Jesus Christ. Look him in his beautiful, perfect eyes and take the wafer and cup in the remembrance that Christ died for you and you will forever be grateful. Amen. Roger, this is the body and blood of Jesus. And we will... The body and blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The body and blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Before we scatter to be the church of God in the world, I just wanted to um, thank Chris, who did our music, um, who learned a new way to do it, and Mike, who took a lot of time to make sure she got it and, and understood how to use it. And definitely, I want to thank Roger for his booming voice. It's such a pleasure to hear a strong voice for Christ. Um, and thank him for being with us and, and helping us to have a beautiful May Day service. Thank you, Roger. It means so much. Thank, thank you for Lord, all your encouragement. God nice bless you. Everybody. God bless you, honestly. All right. So now let's hear the ending blessing. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you light and peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are sending him his grace by faithfulness in number 733. Oh, 